Thank you so much and good morning everyone. Let me say first that hate has no place here and the Muslim ban is unconstitutional. And I want to thank the incredible coalition of organizations that has been organizing since last year. Thank you so much for keeping the pressure on and the heat on to make sure that we overturn this once and for all. And since last January, we know we've been in engaged battle against this Muslim ban. And let me just say that this discrimination isn't new. It's what we were fighting against post 9-11. Frankly, it's what we were fighting against before 9-11. But after 9-11, there was some sort of, people felt this ability to somehow discriminate against Muslims in the name of national security. It's a false choice. It has always been a false choice. Muslims have helped build this country, and we need to make sure that we continue to be a country that welcomes all, regardless of religion. Three times Donald Trump has attempted to force this unconstitutional Muslim ban on us and three times we have stood up to oppose it. And I'm proud of my Attorney General in the state of Washington who was one of the first to file the challenge against the Muslim ban. I'm proud of us that rushed to the SeaTac airport in Seattle. And yes, it's great to be an organizer because I was right there pounding on the doors of Homeland Security to say you can't deport these people. And most recently it was two AAPI judges from Hawaii and Maryland, Judge Derek Watson and Judge Theodore Trang, who said that this inhumane attempt to shut out and criminalize our Muslim brothers and sisters stands squarely in opposition to the Constitution. And the reality is the discriminatory intent behind the Muslim ban has been on full display full display in every aspect of the president's life, including on his personal Twitter feed, where he frequently uses his platform to spread these vile alt-right sentiments and anti-Muslim propaganda. His animus against a Muslim community that is large and vibrant and contributory to this country is beyond apparent. And unfortunately, last December, the Supreme Court order ignored that clear animus that is the centerpiece of the Muslim ban, and there was a st setback, not just for Muslims, not just for Muslims, but for Americans of all stripes who oppose this injustice. We understand that there is a need for us to not only continue to challenge the unconstitutional ban in the legal system, but also to show up for our Muslim neighbors, co-workers, and friends in every venue and community. And I know you all stood firmly in your defense of the constitutional rights of Muslims through activism, through legal aid, through information, through organizing and support. And for my part in Congress, I'm working to codify those rights into law for all immigrants. And so I'm proud that my very first bill that I introduced in the House, Kamala Harris, my sister in the Senate introduced it there, and it was specifically to provide legal access, the Access to Counsel Act, to ensure that people who are held at the airports and the ports of entry or detention centers are guaranteed that access to legal counsel. Because frankly, I think there are a lot of Americans who believe that already happens. They believe that if you're being held, that you get access to a lawyer, that you get access to water and food. And we should have that, but we don't. And so that is why we introduced that. And I can tell you that I am going to do everything I can to use this platform that I have been given to stand against xenophobia, to stand against hate, to stand against Islamophobia and injustice. And I will fight with you every way that we can. We can't just be an opposition party. We are a minority party right now. We can't just be an opposition party. This is not just a democratic issue. This is an issue that transcends all lines. And it is about who we are as human beings and the dignity that we deserve to be accorded no matter what country we come from, no matter what religion we believe, to, believe in, no matter what we look like or what we wear on our heads or our bodies, we deserve dignity and respect for who we are and for what we bring to this country. And so... 
Brothers and sisters, I know that we can win because my experience of fighting against this reminds me of those days after 9-11 when my dear friend Deepa Iyer and so many of us were in the streets trying to help people understand that it is a false choice to say that somehow our national security depends on banning Muslims. That is just playing to the racism and the Islamophobia that is already out there. And so our job is not just here in this court and out here on these streets, but it is in our communities, our workplaces, with our friends and our neighbors to have people understand and call them in to the struggle for justice for all. I want to thank you so much for everything you do. I want to tell you that you have many, many friends in Congress, and I intend to help continue to lead those efforts to make sure that we ensure justice for all because the Muslim ban is unconstitutional. It's religious discrimination. We don't want a ban. We don't want a wall. We want liberty for all. And all religions are welcome here. Thank you all so much.